Hi guys, our topic today is the difference between standalone and non-standalone 5G networks. So 5G networks can be deployed by your mobile operator in two different ways. So you have a non-standalone deployment and you have standalone deployment. A non-standalone 5G deployment basically requires a 4G LTE core network called the EPC. Standalone deployment is an end-to-end -end 5G network, which basically means that the core network and radio network is all 5G. Let's now dive into the details and find out exactly what NSA and SA are. If you follow the news or updates on 5G networks, you may have come across statements that suggest that 5G is different from the earlier generations of mobile networks. I'm sure you would agree that the promoters of every new product or technology say more or less the same thing. So for example, things like, oh, this is a groundbreaking technology and we have never seen anything like this before, etc., etc. But 5G is really different. So please allow me to try to explain to you how 5G is different from the earlier generations of mobile networks. 2G, 3G, and 4G networks were designed to be used by consumers and businesses in more or less the same way. While these networks enabled advanced business-centric use cases like the Internet of Things, IoT, the underlying network functioned in the same way. What changes in 5G is that 5G networks have been designed with advanced business use cases in mind. In fact, the majority of the use cases in 5G are for businesses and industries. There are three use case classes or categories for 5G and our networks. So you have EMBB, Enhanced or Extreme Mobile Broadband, MMTC, Massive Machine Type Communication, and URLLC, Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communications. The consumer use cases are mainly with an EMBB or Enhanced Mobile Broadband which, as the name suggests, is about high-speed mobile broadband. URLLC and MMTC are about advanced use cases where highly reliable and fast connectivity helps digitize industries and municipalities. This is where the difference between standalone and non-standalone 5G becomes important. Standalone and non-standalone 5G are two different ways in which 5G networks can be deployed or implemented by a mobile operator. Non-standalone 5G is a deployment model where a mobile operator uses their existing 4G core network to launch 5G. Standalone 5G, on the other hand, is when the mobile operator uses a 5G core network. In non-standalone 5G, 5G NSA, the mobile operator launches 5G services using a 5G radio network and a 4G core network. The 4G core network is called Evolved Packet Core or EPC. In standalone 5G, 5G SA, the mobile operator launches 5G services by using a 5G radio network as well as a 5G core network. The 5G core network is called 5G CN or 5G Cloud Native Core Network. 5G NSA can also work as an interim step toward 5G SA. When 5G networks reach a higher level of maturity over the next few years, we will likely see an acceleration in standalone 5G network deployments. Let's have a look at this picture to visualize the non-standalone 5G networks. In the NSA model, the end goal is to increase the size of the data pipe by combining the power of both 5G and 4G networks. So let's make a distinction here between the user plane and the control plane. The control plane is for functions like signaling and the user plane is for the actual data pipe that the customer gets. So what happens in non-standalone 5G is that the end user device, for example the mobile phone, benefits from 5G connectivity, whereas the signaling takes place using the 4G network. The phone in 5G NSA establishes a radio connection with both 4G LTE and 5G NR base stations. In addition, both base stations are connected to the 4G core network called the Evolved Packet Core or EPC. As a result, the user level functions like mobile data and quality of service come from a 5G base station called the G Node B and a 4G base station called the E Node B. 
The 4G base station E node B manages all the control functions. Non standalone 5G utilizes 5G NR and 4G LTE networks to enable higher data rates through dual connectivity. With dual connectivity, a 5G phone can connect with both 4G LTE and 5G NR networks to offer higher data rates to phone users. Since non standalone 5G, can work with an existing 4G LTE core network, it offers mobile operators a quick option to enter the 5G market. Standalone 5G networks are end-to-end -end 5G networks without dependency on 4G LTE networks. The user and control planes are linked to the 5G network. In 5G SA, a mobile phone establishes a connection with a 5G base station called Gnode B, which is connected to the 5G cloud-native core network. Now, you may be wondering how a 4G phone connects to the mobile network. For 4G LTE phones, a special kind of 4G base station called Next Generation Evolved Node B, or NGE Node B, is connected to the 5G cloud-native core network. The NGE Node B allows 4G devices to connect to the 4G network for all communication services. The futuristic use cases of 5G require the stand-alone 5G deployment to utilize the software-based architecture, SBA, of the 5G core network. Stand-alone 5G networks have advanced features like network slicing, where the physical network can be split into multiple virtual networks or slices depending on the use cases being served. 5G standalone can access the higher frequency bands, millimeter waves, to take advantage of extremely low latencies in order to facilitate use cases where real-time communication is required. You can download these slides and supporting information from compsbrief.com slash compsbrief hyphen products. There's also a direct link to the download page in the description below. Thanks for watching the video guys. I've written a detailed post on this topic and the link is in the description. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm posting new videos all the time.